Gobble, gobble. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm very jealous of all of you who get to have uh, turkey sandwiches on Monday. Well, some people celebrate on Monday. Some people celebrate on Sunday. Some people celebrate Saturday. Yeah, we don't have a... You're very... You seem very quiet. Like, sir... Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We're here. sitting very close I know, together. I know we are. Hey, yeah. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving, Dan? You guys did a, a whole spread of the turkey, the cranberries, the stuffings, and such. No, we had uh, bacon and eggs. Uh, wh m you know what my family does? What's that? Uh, whoever eats the most turkey gets to wear the turkey carcass <laughs> on their head the entire day. And it's cool because the kids are scared, but at the same time, it toughens them up for future holidays. Uh, the leaves. Dan, we have so much to get to. NFL, baseball playoffs. Uh, but yes, we're going to begin with the Maple Leafs. And here we go. They were in Chicago on a Sunday night. Lots of uh, Torontonians took the flight to Chicago. And it's the Garrett Sparks era. He's the official backup now. And that's our buddy Jonathan Taves with a tip. And tough start for Sparksy. Taves, a friend of Sports Center with Jane Danny, appeared on the show last summer. Kasperi Kapanen, first of the season for the Buds. Austin Matthews, beautiful pass to set up a breakaway. 34 seconds later, 34 with his fourth and three games. We're tied at twos. After one, we're going to the second now, and it is former Moose Jaw Warriors star Morgan Riley sending it on net. John Tavares. Second is a Maple Leaf. Now tied at three. Leafs power play. Tavares wins the draw. Riley to Mitch Marner. Tavares. Second of the period. Toronto's power play improves to three for six on the year. They are lethal. So Leafs are up 5-4, minute and a half to go. Look at Patrick Kane. Like, how does he even do that? Ties it at five. But then 22 seconds after that, Matthews, second of the night. And look at this celebration. Oh, cheeky. 30 seconds to go. Chicago, Chicago's net is empty. Kane buries his second in under a minute. Oh, and cheeky right back at Matthews who quite enjoyed it. We're tied at sixes. We're 19 seconds into overtime. Patty Marlowe to Riley. To Riley. Chicago, to the Moose Lions Jaw Lions Warriors. Squeaks past Cam Ward. Leafs win their second OT game of the year. The New York Giants into Sunday with just one win to their name, and Odell Beckham Jr. knows why. Are we, are we not going to hear from Lil Wayne? <laughs> Guess not. Johnson Panthers. That was Odell Beckham Jr. earlier this week. Uh, that wasn't the only pregame controversy. Eric Reed making his Panthers debut, opting to kneel during the anthem, as he did when he was with the 49ers. It's the Giants, it's the Panthers. After the Giants kicked a field goal to get on the board first, Newton. Cam Newton finds Curtis Samuel. Short pass. Samuel breaks three tackles. Dives into the First career touchdown. Trey Turner and Newton, they, they want to give the ball to a fan. He's like, uh, no, no, uh, that's mine. After calling out Manny for not throwing enough downfield, OBJ takes matters into his own hands. Beckham hooks up with Saquon Barkley on the double pass trick play. Barkley's first career receiving touchdown for 57 yards, coming from OBJ and not Eli Manning. How about the Giants down 11 in the fourth. Eli airs it out for Beckham, makes the catch with the defender draped all over him, pulls it down in the end zone, 33 yard touchdown. They convert the two point attempt to pull within three. Late in the quarter, Giants down a score. Manning connects with Barkley, and he launches into the end zone for a touchdown. Barkley was actually shaken up on the landing. Giants erase a 14 point deficit to take the lead with just over a minute to play. Down by one, it all came down to Graham Gano. Gano lands a 63-yard field goal to win it. It was supposed to be a matchup of Patrick Mahomes and the most electrifying offense in the NFL against Jalen Ramsey in a Jags defense that allowed the fewest points and yards to this point of the season. But what if I told you that on Sunday, the Chiefs' defense flipped the script? Chiefs defense 
Got to get to them in just a second. First, it's the Jalen Ramsey Tyreek Hill head to head matchup for the first time in the National Football League. Here's Mahomes, first quarter, floating one to Hill out of his reach. Ramsey letting him know about it. Hill held to just 14 yards in the first half. A couple of plays later, Mahomes. Second rushing TD of the season. KC, the only team to score on all of their opening drives this year. Still in the first half. Moit Mortals. Puts it right into the hands of Chris Jones, who is also the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Second of five turnovers in the game. The Chiefs D coming up huge. As I mentioned, they're playing hot potato. It's all fun for the Chiefs. It's 20 nothing at the half. And then we get more from Ramsey and Hill. Mahomes looking for Hill, forced out by Ramsey. But the two were not done. Final minute of the quarter. Top of your screen, Mahomes airs one out for Hill. And this time, Hill burns Ramsey for a 36-yard gain. And just sort of calmly walks back. Hill finished with 61 yards receiving. Mahomes entered with a league leading 14 TDs. Held without a passing TD in this football game, but still the Chiefs D helping them improve to 5 and 0. Battle of the Lone Star State was the Sunday nighter. Cowboys and Texans, second quarter. Deshaun Watson can't find a receiver. He says, okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll keep it myself. And gets hammered. On the Texans' next drive, Watson tries again. Uh, Cowboys stop him again. Watson getting clobbered. Before the half on fourth and goal, Watson sprints for the corner. Guess what happens? Denied again. Jalen Smith with the hit. Dallas down 10-6 at the break. Watson taking some massive shots in the first half. Got checked out on the sideline. Spent some time in the medical tent. But he stayed in the game. Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott, third quarter. Plenty of time. Pass, tip, intercepted by Justin Reed. Prescott's second pick of the game. Fourth quarter, Cowboys down three. Prescott almost gets sacked by a friend of Sports Center with Jay and Dan, J.J. Watt. Keeps his balance. Well, falling out of bounds, somehow finds Tavon Austin. That led to a game-tying field goal, so we need overtime. That's Kaimi Fairburn, and he hits it. Beat the Cowboys. 1960. How about Craig Council's Milwaukee Brewers? Nine straight wins to close out the season. Two straight wins to start the NLDS against Colorado. They were on the verge of a sweep. But what if I told you the Rockies had other ideas? Bad ones, but still other ideas. When we only scored See two runs what happened. Or less. That's they, I'm just so Milwaukee up 2 nothing. Trying to get back to the exactly. NLCS for the first time since 2011. Going, Top four, anybody. one of the Brewers, Jesus Aguilar. So Crushes one sometimes. to left. First home run of the postseason. And the Brew Crew are out to a 2 nothing lead. And then in the sixth, it all really came apart for Colorado. Scott Oberg on the pitch. Eric Kratz going the other way. High fly ball to deep right field. Bob Costas on the call here. Kratz finished with three hits in the game. Milwaukee has been on second and third. And then with two out, this is bizarre. Oberg drops the ball. That's a ball. Curtis Granderson points it out. At the least opportune time. 3 nothing Brewers, two pitches after that. More disaster for Ober. Wow. So that's a Bach and a wild pitch in the same at-bat. Brewers are up 4 nothing now, and then in the ninth inning, 5 nothing Milwaukee. Just... Keon Broxton, known for his fantastic defense. And center. here he's hitting one to the Chick-fil-A sign, maybe? Delicious and simple chicken sandwiches. The Brewers sweep the Rockies and are off to their first National League Championship Series since 2011. Dodgers and Braves game three. Atlanta facing elimination. They're still doing that? No. They've yet to score a run in this series, uh, Atlanta has. Bases loaded, two outs in the second. Walker Bueller walks Sean Newcomb, the pitcher. Took Atlanta 19 innings to get on the board. Ronald Acuna Jr. up next. 3-0 count, Bueller. 
almost walks in another run, called a strike. Uh, Atlanta liked that call. Joe Davis on the call. That's only the Braves' second extra base hit this series. And the 20-year-old Acuna becomes the youngest player in postseason history to hit a grand slam. 5-2 in the fifth, Chris Taylor. Man on, ball gone. Cuts Atlanta's lead to one, two batters later. New pitcher in, Max Muncy says, hello, ties it at five. L.A. looking to advance to its third straight NLCS. Bottom six, Freddie Freeman, dual citizen. His mother's from my hometown of Peterborough, Ontario. And Yesiel Puig does not even move for that. Solo shot, Atlanta back up 6-5. Ninth inning, Rodas Vizcaino against Muncy. Two on, none out. 98 on the gun, goodbye. Still two out, it's to go. Manny Machado. Chases, pitch gets away. Both runners now in scoring position, but there's two out. Brian Dozier to extend the game. Now, Braves hang on to see another day. There will be a game four. We're walking. Dan's recovered from his near fall. <laughs> Derek Lewis Fighter Talc is the, uh, the clock sponsor this week. You didn't see his uh, post-fight uh, interview. You missed out. Yeah, he dropped his trousers. You gave me uh, some talc for my birthday. I did. I did give you some talc. Well, because I know you like Gold Bond, but I wanted to up your game. I got you the Derek Lewis stuff. I'm going to tie my shoe here. Okay. One second. Boom. Done. McGregor took to social media early Sunday morning after complete silence following the, the fights. Had good knock. Looking forward to the rematch. UFC Commission Dana White has not yet committed to another fight between the two rivals, but he will. <laughs> yeah, and McGregor's, uh, will. McGregor's $3 million purse was not withheld because uh, the commission examined video footage, determined his side did nothing wrong in the melee. So you watched uh, this fight, uh, and this is a classic Dana, and uh, we like Dana, we just want to clear clarify that. Yeah. But after d the bus incident with Dana, you know, the, you know, with Connor, Dana was like this, he was living. going to jail, he's not, and then of course Connor came back. So they'll fight again. This yes. is the, probably one of the... Best, as long as no one got hurt, this is the best thing that could happen to the UFC. Uh, and some people from Habib's team already have been arrested, three of them, I believe. Right. But they were released they were because released. Connor refused to press charges. Right. That's not how he uh, settles scores. So <laughs> new. No. It's unknown what the consequences will be as a result of that melee, though, Dan. But you and I, we think we can help. Have you been attacked by an athlete at a live sporting event? Are threatening actions preventing you from heckling the way you want? Don't let poor athlete behavior tarnish a night of competitive violence. Climb down from the cage and call the double attorneys at 555-462-8253. That's 555-I'M-ATTACKED. Being attacked by a professional athlete could entitle you to a huge cash settlement. Call now if you've been assaulted by Khabib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor, Ron Artest, the 1981 Boston Bruins, Mike Milbury of the 1981 Boston Bruins, Ty Domi, and Mike Milbury of the 1981 Boston Bruins with your own shoe. The double attorneys are here to beat them with their own shoes. Call now. And we are working hard there for you. And now for the rest of the stories you need to know. It's time for the J and Dan News Reel. Those taught in broadcasting school always say news. That's how a Ken Shaw local uh, CTV anchor says it. San Jose Sharks have placed uh, Joe Thornton on the IR. This comes after Thornton experienced swelling in his right knee. Oh boy. 39-year-old coming off his second straight year of undergoing reconstructive knee surgery. Jumbo Joe, one assist in two games in the early goings of this season. Bet you if he had that beard, his knee would have been fine. I think he's uh, obviously growing it back, it seems. Well, I think he's got, like, the Homer symptom. He needs to shave as soon as he's shaved. Right. Like Corey Warren. <laughs> More injury news. Kings goaltender Jonathan Quick placed on injured reserve as well. He sustained a lower body injury in practice. Kings head coach John Stevens said Quick will undergo further examination. Jack Campbell expected to get some time between the pipes while Quick is out. But the big news is that Peter Budai has been called up from the Kings AHL affiliate, meaning the Kings made a Budai call. 
And it also means Homer Simpson's back in the NHL because yeah, the guy has on the mask. Homer on his mask. That's right. That was another informative edition of the Jay and Dan Newsreel. This is so exciting. Tim Hortons NHL trading cards are back. They're available right now at Tim Hortons. They're a buck with a qualifying great purchase. Yeah, there's a limited edition autograph cards available this year. We got uh, a little uh, Anthony Mantha in there. Morgan Riley. Hey, there he is, friend he's, of Sports uh, Center with Jane Dan. He's the big uh, hero on Sunday night for the Leafs. And who let the dogs out? Alex Barkov did. Barkov's a great player. No, it doesn't seem anyone knows about him. Andre oh. Vasilevsky, the only player on TSN's top 50 players. <laughs> That's a joke from last week. Those longtime viewers will know that. Miko Rantanen, big things expected of him this year. And there's Patty Kane. He did, he did this thing. I love tonight. that. Players actually showing emotion. Yeah, it's fun. But then afterward, like Austin didn't have to explain it that way. You know, he could have just said, hey, we're just having fun. He actually showed some emotion. Yeah, it was great. It was, oh, that was, I mean, all the games this weekend have just been high scoring and fun. It's been awesome. Why not? Let's flash back to week one. Browns and Steelers. Seconds left in OT. Zane Gonzalez, a 43-yarder. Everyone thought this was going to be the end of the losing streak for Cleveland, but they had to settle for a tie in that one after Gonzalez missed the 43-yarder. And then in week two, after the Browns scored a game-tying touchdown, Gonzalez missed the point after. And the Saints would then score a quick TD, and Gonzalez called on for a 52-yarder to force overtime. And this was just an absolute shank. And Gonzalez was cut the next day, which led to Cleveland signing a new kicker. And that brings us to Sunday. Dying seconds against the Baltimore Ravens. We're tied at nine. Greg Joseph has never attempted a game-winning kick at any level over his career. This is for the win for Cleveland, 55 yards. Yeah, Joseph had already missed a point after early in the day. Fails to make the game-winning field goal. So for the third time in five games this season, the Browns are going to overtime. Incredible. Two minutes left in overtime. Cleveland, deep in their own territory. Baker Mayfield avoids the sack, finds Derek Willies, and he picks up a huge 39-yard game. A few plays after that, the Browns once again call on Joseph. This is a 37-yard attempt. This is his second chance to be a hero. And he's kicking it in front of this chef. <laughs> that was like if Dan kicked it. That was like Wendy's kick for a million. But it worked! It worked! And J.R. Smith of the Cavs was so excited he did what he always does. He took his shirt off. Just as he did when the Browns won their first game two weeks ago. Cleveland gets their first victory on a Sunday since December of 2015. That snaps the longest drought in NFL history. While we have a second, let's check in on John Gruden and the Raiders. There's no, no sound to that video. Anyway, it's accurate. All fingers are pointed to John Gruden and his 10-year, $100 million contract. A hire that so far has brought one win. The team may want to look back at comments Gruden made in July when he said, quote, if I can't get it done, I'm not going to take their money. As the Raiders lose again. Wow. Okay, here we are. Huh. We didn't. Sometimes we get surprised. Because <laughs> we don't read the rundown of the show that Tim creates. Uh, just to be clear, my mic came up while we were coming out of the Manziel clip. I didn't think Johnny Manziel was Russian. No, we were talking about Alexander Barkov, yeah. who's Finnish, and it's always kind of, you know, you forget that? Yeah. So we were just having a discussion about that. Okay. We talk about things sometimes. <laughs> Producer Tim obviously wants us to move on to the mailbag, so let's get right to it, Dave. This one from Ryan McGavick. When Seattle's awarded an NHL team, what is the likely name? I thought about this, Dan. Uh, Seattle. Uh, it's always wet, Pacific Northwest, rainy. Puddles of water form, bigger puddles of water. A giant, uh, shallow puddle of water is a slough, and that was also a 1977 Triple Crown winner. Say hello to the Seattle slough, Dan. I like, I like the those, color scheme. Right? Very good. Um, I decided to go with uh, Seattle's grunge history and go with the Seattle 
the Sound Gardens. That's pretty cool too. I'd be, I'd be actually really thrilled if they did that. The also pressure. kind of a tribute to Chris Cornell. The pressure is on Seattle, like uh, the guys it, were talking about last week, to, to be as good as uh, the Vegas experience. It's true, it's true. The bar has been set high. Thumpy Loudfoot, I believe uh, Thumpy had a question last week too, wants to know, if either of you were sent to live in a cabin in the thick wilderness of northern Ontario and you could bring the entire discography of only one band to listen to for the rest of your lives, what would it be? Well, since you're in Canada, uh, Northern Ontario. Yeah, you, the home of the hip is Ontario, so I say tragically. Just yeah. play Bob Cajun on a loop. That's right. For me, it would be, I thought about the Beatles, the Stones, um, Sharon Lois and Bram have a, a expansive dis discography, yep. great records, but I went with Miles Davis because uh, I feel like you wouldn't get sick of jazz. You know, it'd just be in the background, just playing there. Yeah, I'd get sick of it. ZF or ZF given. <laughs> His uh, handle is at Space Force Ops. He said, what is Gritty's next move? For me, Dan, it's got to be to shave. Let's take a look at what Gritty would look like if he shaved. And I think it's a pretty nice look. He cleans up pretty well. I think his next move is to systematically uh, eliminate every single member of Sesame Street, one by one. Who would you start with? Oscar. He's really? I feel like you get him on your side and try to take some people out first with Oscar. No, but... Uh, he could, uh, he could uh, talk to people in uh, Toronto with the raccoon problem. You put the things on the garbage cans that you can't open up, so mm. Oscar could never get out. Problem solved. What a horrible way for Oscar to die, to suffocate him in his own trash can? You're sick. Hey, that's gritty talking. Hey, it's war. War on Sesame Street. That leads us to the Jannies. Spent a lot of time at our cottage over the weekend. Dan and I did cooking up turkey and giblets. Early in the show, we showed you a clip of uh, Odell Beckham Jr. saying he wanted the Giants to go over the top, and this is what he meant. He wanted to throw the football himself to the rookie running back and second overall pick, Saquon Barkley, for the touchdown. Dolphins, Bengals, Ryan Tannehill avoids the pressure, tries to get rid of it, ball bounces off a Dolphin player right to Michael Johnson. Brings it in for the pick six. I have a similar play in our next Janney. It's Blake Bortles off his teammate's head into the arms of Steven Nelson for the interception. Bortles, where are you throwing that? Leafs, Hawks, this pass, this is unreal. Yeah, what a beauty indeed. How many goals in that game? 14, 15? 13? 13? 15 yards. Yeah, I like that call, we put the Spanish call. Yeah, that was very cool. That was your decision, wasn't it? It was. It's the worst play of the okay, day. The Back to Buffalo, Stephen Housh. 30-yard field, 30 yard field goal. Placeholder for Hortez. Pulls the ball back before getting swallowed up by the Titans D. In the end, though, the Bills the got the victory. For the Producer Bills. Tim almost As smiled for a moment. Empty. Interesting. Uh, you blew it. We pointed out our errors. At the start of the show, uh, you either had a very itchy back or a problem with... It was a problem with my um, mic pack. I okay. couldn't hear you. I thought your mic was off. Uh, you said Craig Council's Brewers closed out the season with nine straight wins. It was actually eight. Hmm. I struggled to say the Brewers won six zip. And we were both surprised we were on camera after the Dolphins Bengals pack. We'll try harder next time. What a weekend it was.